Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, 16th annual CNews Festival Q&A for the Pathfinders program. My name is Mihailo Bogdanov. Um, I am on the CNews programming committee. We are thrilled to be welcoming these uh, filmmakers to the Q&A. I would also like to share a big thank you to Adobe for uh, sponsoring CNews and uh, this program. CNews would uh, have not uh, been possible without your support. Um, now I'm going to ask everyone to introduce themselves and say a word or two about the film they are presenting. Um, so uh, let's start with uh, Miriam and Dagna. Hello, I'm Miriam. Uh, I'm Dagny. I'm uh, acting in Miriam's film. And I'm yeah. the yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm the director and writer. Um, so the short film Ida uh, is about Ida who's uh, lonely and uh, she uh, is afraid to reach out to her friends and then uh, the loneliness eats her up later in the film. Uh, so this is a film that we made in 2018. Uh, it was a student film and we filmed it on 16 millimeters, uh, which was really fun. And that's also how me and Dagny met for the first time. And we've made lots of movies after that. Yeah. So that's, that's us. Wow. Very cool. Um, yeah, this uh, film, uh, just a uh, spectacular film. Um, I just want to ask, like, uh, your uh, uh, first thing, personally, me, myself, being a filmmaker, I was so fascinated by uh, your production design and cinematography. Um, can you say a few words about your preparation and production? Uh, yes, yeah, so um, we only had uh, four uh, rolls of film uh, and each roll had uh, 10 minutes. So we only had 40 minutes uh, to film and make a movie. Uh, so every shot uh, and how long uh, the shot was going to be, we had to prepare that uh, really strict before we were filming. Uh, so I was working with a really good cinematographer, a friend of mine. It's, his name is Håkon. Uh, and I am really fond of close-ups, as uh, you may see there. And um, uh, the way I like to use close-ups is um, to use them wisely. Um, and also in this uh, film, you can see that uh, because it's a really quiet film. It uses its tempo and it uh, lays on Dougie when she feels her, yeah, when she's most lonely and alone so that we can uh, come closer to her because the film doesn't have that much dialogue. Uh, so it's more of like an observant film about the situation. So you're a bit like a, like a fly on the wall throughout the whole film. Uh, and then also, um, since we filmed on film, you have to be really strict with what you're going to film. But I uh, wanted to have two dolly shots. Uh, that's not um, a really good idea when you only have uh, uh, a small amount of uh, film to film on. Uh, but we use that. And after that, we um, could only have like one or maximum two takes of the, all the other scenes. So we prepared a lot uh, with Dagny. Um, and then we also had to time it when uh, we were, I was reading the script out loud and I was acting like I was Dagny. And then we had the timer on to see uh, how much of the role we were gonna use. Uh, and I think that uh, what was really good uh, with making this movie was that I learned that uh, you have to be really precise on what you're gonna film, uh, even if it's if you film on film or if you film digital, I've taken that with me uh, in the future films that I've made, and it also strengthened my way in directing, uh, so that um, we were as precise as we could. Uh, so I, yeah, I think it's a uh, it's really weird talking about it so many years later, uh, but it's fun going down memory li memory lane and see. Uh, that I have the same uh, genre in, my, in many of my films, but also observing uh, observing it from another situation than it was when I right after it got made. So I don't know if you wanna. I think I learned a lot from doing it too. 
because of the uh, that we found on actual film. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, it was a, it was kind of a hard project. I don't think it was like from the start, but as we started filming, it became really important to me. And uh, I think it was for all of us. And yeah. I think you can see it on screen too. And I think it's something exciting with filming on film because you don't really know what you get until yeah. you watch it. So you just have to cross your fingers and hope that yeah. that uh, what you want to kind of, uh, what do you say, like uh, project uh, kind of uh, communicates. Awesome. Yes, I, I have uh, more questions for you, Doug, now, but uh, let's uh, move on. And uh, I would like to ask uh, Ciara Loren to uh, present yourself and uh, just say a few words about your film as well. Hi, so my name is Ciara Lauren. I directed and wrote a film uh, called Life in the Between, which is about um, a six-year-old little girl named Sara who is in a biracial family and in biracial limbo and trying to figure out like where she belongs in the U.S. So, yeah. <laughs> Just a quick um, intro question for you then right away. Um, um, it was brilliant film as well. And uh, you have a, just like sort of kind of like intro. How was it to work with kids and direct them? Um, it was incredible. Um, anything that you learn about like directing actors just completely gets thrown out the window because they don't understand um, any of that. So um, just trying to put it in terms that like she would understand and the other actresses would understand was really, it put me on my toes and it kept me like really creative. Um, and, but she was the most professional six year old I've ever met. I was not that focused when I was six years old. Um, she was like, she had the entire script memorized. And when other actors were like, like forgetting their lines, she'd literally feed it to them before like any of our script soups could. So it was, it was insane. Um, but she was amazing. Yeah. Very cool. Um, well, um, I have more questions, don't worry, but I want to move on to uh, Radia and ask him about the uh, presentation of yourself and a few words about your movie. So hi, I'm Radea uh, and I'm from Australia. I wrote, directed, animated and composed music for an animated short film called The Quiet. Um, and it's about an astronaut who ponders in the quietude of space and he begins to reminisce about his brother and it kind of his brother's story kind of starts to unfold through sound um but basically yeah without giving too much away kind of um i guess his, his history and dark sea kind of secrets are revealed and um kind of explores the aftermath of that um but through celestial imagery yeah, I found your film very powerful in terms of visual storytelling. Um, is there um, like the parallels um, between uh, the personal story between brothers and the, this universal uh, approach to it? Like, how did you come up with it? If you can just say a few words. Oh, that's a good question. I think I really was very interested in just telling a human story set on Earth through Yes, through celestial imagery. I think I've always loved space, um, but I think I was kind of thinking about, you know, how there's no sound in space, but, you know, what if I could kind of, you know, bring like, you know, household sounds and, you know, sounds from this is everyday life um, into the mix and try and like, I guess, interweave them and try and see if that could kind of bring a narrative out of that. Um, and so, yeah, that was kind of interesting just to be able to use I guess, yeah, use sounds in um, an environment in which, you know, they wouldn't normally be anything there. So mm -hmm. um, it kind of definitely, yeah, I, I think it was very much an like, evolutionary process and like a lot of ideas kind of came to me as I was making it. Um, and yeah, it was, it was it's honestly really fun to just be able to kind of see how it all kind of comes together just, yeah, through while I was kind of making it, animating it. Very cool. Yeah, it's very uh, was very impactful. Um, so let me go back and ask Dagna about um, your role in this film and how did you approach? How did you prepare yourself um, being in this character? 
Um, I I got a playlist, like a music playlist from uh, Miriam, uh, that was called uh, "Sounds of Loneliness" or something like that, that I listened a lot to, and and I had just moved to Oslo, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I guess I felt a little bit lonely too, and then it was just to like jump into that feeling and embrace it um and i think that was really nice with uh, doing it on actual film too because uh, then you kind of have to save it for the few shots you have so you don't kind of overuse it or use it up if that makes sense <laughs> yeah yeah i mean definitely um and i want to ask like was it so now i see the parallels between your personal um kind of like um, story as well but I uh, like how challenging was it to kind of like present yourself so isolated because I think you did an amazing job and um, like you really feel through this your acting um, your character thank you uh, I I don't really know how to answer that I think like when I met Miriam in school uh, I think we immediately had a connection yeah and uh, uh, I felt that she was a person that I could re reveal myself to. So I was never at any point scared or, or thinking it was hard. I remember that one shot in yeah. the kitchen. I, uh, I, was that the last shot? No, uh, the one with the dolly in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, that was uh, scene two. Yeah, uh, I remember this scene, uh, the second scene that we were filming on the first day, uh, and I didn't want to have that. Uh, but um, uh, the first AD uh, and the producer wanted to have it that way so that we could clear out um, uh, the apartment first. And I felt that I was a bit stressed in that situation that we first started with the first scene where Ida is talking to her friend on the phone and asking of what she's doing and if mm. she could join in. Uh, and then we go right to, uh, yeah, we started with like the first scene and then we filmed the last scene. Uh, and I remember that um, I had never worked like that before uh, or instructed that way mm. because it was uh, such a big difference. Mm. Um, but I remember that uh, we went to a room alone. Yeah, because uh, I remember that I was a little bit stressed yeah. uh, uh, too. And then we went to a room and I, I and closed the door. And think I think we talked a little bit shit about <laughs> like the the plan and everything. And then we uh, kind of uh, we uh, bonded over we that as well. Bonded, <laughs> and then uh, I think uh, we both used the stress for the scene. And I remember being nervous that it didn't uh, kind of come through yeah. the way it's supposed to, but then you said you were happy and and uh, I trusted you. Yeah, uh, Dagny is, uh, so um, we have a really good, uh, our friendship has a really nice story because we studied in the same school. Uh, she studied acting. Uh, we met when we were in the second year. Yeah. And uh, when we had our first, we're in the, um, uh, director students uh, had their first workshop with the actors. Then I was in the same group as Dagny. Yeah. Uh, and then a bit sh short after, uh, we made this film. And what's really nice with Dagny is that uh, she's willing to. Uh, you could, yeah, you could see that if you've seen some of my later films. Uh, but she's really good into adapting into different roles. Uh, she's played. We made three movies together, and yeah. all of those, the character that she's played, they've been so different. Yeah. Um, but she's really good with uh, using herself as a person and adapting herself into the character. And the way that I uh, like to direct is that I have a premise about what I think uh, the char character is and how he or she portrays uh, and go down into the mental state and we talk a lot about um, the character but then I feel like it's really important to find out uh, how Dagny plays Ida 
because the way I would play the main character, it will be a lot different. Uh, so it's really important for me to have a good communication. And I think the key uh, for myself when I'm making films is that people trust me and that we're totally honest with each other uh, because uh, I'm not the only one who's making the film. The film was not just mine. Uh, it's uh, just as much as the PA on set. Uh, we make this all together and I'm really grateful that uh, people want to work with me and that Dagny has wanted to work with me Anytime. later. <laughs> yeah. um, so I learned a lot uh, about that project and um, I'm just talking, yeah, I'll just uh, continue what pops up in my mind. Uh, but uh, the films that I've made um, in the past, I've always used something of myself. So Ida is about loneliness and that was something that I felt for a really long time, uh, but not many people could see it because I didn't talk about it. And I had like this mask on. Uh, and then the later films, uh, I had some, uh, yeah, it was something uh, about my inner self that I didn't want to uh, portray to others in real life. But then I also challenged myself to show that in my films. Yeah. Um, and I think it's because of that, uh, because you're taking a risk too. It's yeah. easier for me as an actor to take that risk with you yeah. because it's not only me risking something, you know? Yeah. yeah. Very well said. Um, I appreciate your mentioning the every uh, position in a film crew including PAs, it's very important to yeah. recognize. Um, well, I will move on to uh, Sierra Loren. Uh, we have a first question from the audience and um, I would uh, wanna ask you uh, for a film about silence and isolation, uh, there's very uh, complex sound design. Uh, I'm sorry, this is not the question for you. <laughs> uh, the family dynamic was very real and uh, lived in. Um, as a director, how did you create such an intimate space amongst the actors? And it just, uh, that question is applies for me as well. I really want to know about that. Okay. <laughs> um, so we didn't have a lot of time beforehand. Um, so I, I spent forever trying to cast. We had um, about a week of pre-pro and um, anything before that was like when I was writing the script, I was also looking for actors just because of the nature of our film program. It was, we were all on a very uh, like strict time constraint. So um, a lot of my actors didn't really meet until like two days before. Um, and I had them all in an Airbnb together, except for the dad, because he was local to Tallahassee, just so that the siblings could get to know each other and all bond together and have meals together and things like that. Um, but as far as like the actual space um, for like the living room scene and that type of stuff, I based that off of my own experience growing up and like living in a small apartment and wanting it to feel um, very warm and close knit because this, that's the place where like Sarah is supposed to feel the most safe. Um, so yeah, um, I think the biggest things I think that contributed to the actors really gelling together would be like the Airbnb and then um, in between takes and stuff when we were moving on for like lighting setups and such, they were hanging out together. So it's really beautiful to watch them bond. Wow, very interesting. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm gonna move on to another audience question and I'm not gonna mess up this one. Um, Radai, it's for you. Uh, for a film about silence and isolation, uh, there is very complex sound design. Can you talk about the extremely layered sound design? Yeah, um, so yeah, with a film that's very much, it's called The Quiet and very much about sound and silence and the lack of uh, sound. Um, yeah, sound design is something that um, I 
thought long and hard about. It's actually kind of how the film started out. Like, it, sound kind of came first in a sense. Um, I was basically, you know, with different parts of how, like, the, the scenes are constructed um, through those household sounds, like the sound of a gas stove or salt shakers. Um, through that story, I then kind of came up with the visuals of how that would kind of translate after that. Um, but yeah, I think definitely with the sound, it was, it was something that I also wanted to make sure it kind of was quite layered in terms of meaning and um, was able to do a few things at once. Like, for example, there's this scene with um, Saturn, like kind of playing on a record player. Um, and then we hear that kind of sound of like a vinyl, like a record player kind of static. Um, but it also kind of doubles as the sound of rain was right afterwards it kind of transitions into this um the shot of rain and so kind of yeah i guess on that set in that sense yeah trying to kind of layer it and kind of very, very much transition into from one to another through the sound as well um but also yeah definitely like telling more about and then revealing more about the character and the context of the character um all the way throughout like um in the beginning we see these kind of sparks kind of at the creation of the universe and this big bang kind of sort of scenario essentially this kind of construction of this kind of space environment um and then at the end the like we kind of hear this those same sounds that we heard at the very beginning uh, but they're revealed to be this you know it sounds like a light like flickering and like the a jail cell closing so yeah kind of trying to um really make these kind of parallels between almost two two worlds and seeing how they can really both fit into this one kind of yeah i guess seamless kind of experience for the character um and yeah but yeah that i think i was definitely kind of yeah considering that but also um you know where like the moments in which silence would be most needed and you know where i would kind of completely strip that away or the moments where music would be you know taken out or the way like the most appropriate places to put that in so yeah i was really kind of trying to find a balance between that between like super loud moments and then the complete opposite as well and where that would most fit well in the story well very cool um i i had like kind of like i want to ask you uh uh another question um is this is the theme of the space and like you describing it big bang um you taking such a like enormous uh sort of like a step in the filmmaking with such an idea and it's such a bold move i feel like and um from credits i recognize that you creating animation yourself and i'm wondering like what is the process of creating such a something enormous and and how do you go with with the process of it yeah well um it's good that this is sponsored by adobe because i yeah made I kind of everything pretty much just on this laptop I'm talking to you right now through like, you know, software like Adobe After Effects, you can kind of bring in a few plugins and that kind of thing and Adobe Animate. Um, and so I guess, yeah, the amazing thing about that was that I was able to kind of create visuals um, that kind of do show the expanse of space um, just from somewhere like my bedroom. It's pretty, pretty, um, yeah, like, I, yeah, I thought that was kind of just, yeah, very, very grateful to be able to kind of express my creativity through that. I think animation, one of the parts I love about it is how it's so, like, limitless and, you know, there's not anything that's kind of, yeah, I guess limited to you as long as you're able to, to kind of create it on screen. And, you know, if I was trying to make this a live action, probably would have cost a lot more. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I kind of was able to, let my imagination run wild in that sense. Um, but yeah, I think definitely, especially with a film that's very much about silence and isolation, but also the escapism, yeah, escapism and the imprisonment of the mind. Um, yeah, it was really, uh, I really liked being able to kind of have those contrasts between, you know, literally the infinite void of space, but also as something as small as a, a solitary confinement jail cell. And so, um yeah but yeah adobe after effects and just the adobe suite really really saved me 
Yeah, wow. I, I really appreciate the way you're describing the your uh, skill of animation as a limitless. And I think it's uh, something that um, I would like to see more in animation because like you said, you can do almost everything. Um, and I feel like I would want to see that, like that infinite space exploration. Um, it's just so intriguing to me. Um, I'm going to move on to another question from audience uh, for uh, Miriam. Um, and the question is, um, loneliness is timeless, yet the loneliness here feels very contemporary um, on her phone, computer, to fill the void. Can you talk about how your film relates um, a comp contemporary uh, melee scene? Um, so we use that because um, most of the time uh, Ida is alone. Uh, there are just some minutes of her in the cafe. Um, but I think that uh, because of the time that we live in now, uh, the place where we feel that we can kind of communicate while we're alone is through the phone. Uh, so in the first scene, uh, she tries to call her friend and asks what she's up to. Um, and then she says that she's with a guy that's called Jonas. And uh, then she says that it's okay. She asks if uh, they can drink some wine together uh, and tries to tell her that uh, she hasn't prepared anything. Uh, later, we see that she's drinking all the wine herself. She's uh, bought some stuff. Uh, afterwards, uh, we see uh, that uh, she's in front of her computer. Uh, there's an animal program uh, going on. Uh, to, um, and I don't think that you can hear it, or maybe people don't, um, because uh, we wanted to make like um, a nature program. Uh, but we, um, uh, one of the uh, producers that I went to school with, uh, we uh, did it in post, post where he says, uh, and something in the lines of, uh, the baby hyena has now lost her pack. And it was like something that uh, was going to uh, portray how Ida feels uh, inside. But I'm not sure if uh, people hear that. Uh, but that was uh, the reason for us to use that. Um, then later on, uh, we see that, um, I'm just talking about the process where uh, later on we see that um, Ida's in a cafe. She says, sees one of her old friends that she hasn't seen in a long time. Uh, we see that she goes up to the two girls and we think that, that she's having a conversation with them. Then everything turns into a kind of nightmare where they don't answer when she's asked, and, asking questions and then we have a dolly shot where we go back and see that she's still sitting in the same place. Uh, she's just imagining uh, this fear and then she doesn't um, have the courage to actually go and ask. And then we have on the last scene, she's still on her phone uh, and then she's uh, calling her friend that she saw in the cafe. And then this time she's really trying to ask if she can uh, join, but then she gets rejected. Uh, so I feel like it was gonna be like, um, uh, in Norwegian it, it's called uh, uh, um Yeah, it's like a, a line through the phone. Yeah, where we have um, the first scene where she's on her phone trying to call a friend um, and then she doesn't um, have the courage to ask or be direct. And then we have the last scene where she's trying the same. And she really tries this time, but then she gets shut down. Uh, and what I was wanted to have also with the, the phone elements is to uh, create um, an even bigger loneliness where she is talking to someone else but we only mm. see her. I think like the reason that it feels contemporary is that uh, so much of our lives are on the internet, especially like in this pandemic and everything. Mm. And you see what everyone else is doing. Yeah. Uh, all this stuff you don't take part of yourself. And it's not normal to knock on a friend's door anymore. You always call first. Yeah. And I think that's probably why it feels so contemporary. Yeah. 
because you kind of have to ask before you make the move. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. I, I um, like you said in the beginning, uh, since the film was done a few years ago, I think because you incorporate this whole idea of cell phones and laptops, um, you know, this film became sort of like, you know, I feel like it's still growing, um, you know, um, with our daily uses of the same equipment, electronics, um, it kind of, you know, it almost feels like it's done yesterday. And I feel like it's going to be keep going that way for years to come. So um, great job. Um, I have uh, one more question from the audience from uh, Sierra Loren. Um, and um, it looks like we are running out of time a little bit here. So I would uh, really want to know, uh, Sierra Loren, um, did you have the young actress do the painting or was that uh, made by someone on the crew? So um, the very last image where you see the, the painting that she's standing in front of, um, that was based off of a reference photo that I gave them of a painting that I made when I was in preschool. Um, and so we had this like whole all about me presentation and like um, I made a portrait. Um, and so I had that portrait as reference. So they just copied that um, but then adapted it for my film of having like half half white, half black. Um, but for the parts earlier in my film when she's painting, we had the same outline that we used for the final. Um, and we just had a bunch of copies of that thanks to my production designer. Um, and so she was able to paint in real time on set. And then if she wasn't painting it, I had the right angle or whatever, like we would switch it out for another piece of paper that would, yeah, it's an incredible <laughs> short amount of time for planning, but it was, it was really thorough. For sure. It's a very interesting fact to know <laughs> behind the scenes. Um, so um, even though we're almost out of time, I still would really want to know if um, everyone uh, would like to just uh, really quickly name um, some interesting film that they can recommend recently to uh, audience and me, because we all love films. So uh, I would love to hear your um, sort of, you know, suggestions. So um, let's start with uh, Miriam and Dagna. Where to begin? <laughs> it's a big question. Um, a film that I watched recently that's not really new, that really touched me. Uh, <laughs> It's a blockbuster film though. Uh, it's Little Women, uh, the new one. I really love that one. Um, yeah, 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 it really touched me. But yeah, I sh should name something else, but I, uh, my, my head is blank. It's a great choice. <laughs> uh, so, um, or the, latest film or the recent film that i watched uh it was uh i don't know if you've watched it but it's a danish film it's really good it's new it's called um uh, druk yeah yeah uh in danish uh one more another round i think it's in english uh it's a really really good film uh it's the same director thomas winterberg yeah thomas winterberg mm -hmm. i don't know if you've seen that film uh but it's i uh, i did see it so um yeah, I, yeah. I think it's a great recommendation it's a phenomenal yeah. film it's really good um and i think that he is one of the best, uh, best yeah. <laughs> directors that i've seen i really love uh, danish films um something else that is not a film but uh um a tv show or tv series uh, with only five episodes uh, that I think is really, really good. Um, it's the second time I watched it, but it's called Patrick Melrose. Uh, it's on HBO. Mm -hmm. um, and what I really like about that is um, it's the character development that we see mm -hmm. and that we only actually almost um, follow the main character. And then it's a lot of voiceover. Um, and they get to, they create this chaos uh, with uh, the voiceover and the acting and also how it's edited and uh, shot. So uh, don't watch this it on a day where you're feeling really good. You have to be mentally prepared. Uh, but maybe, yeah, 
those two, I think that... Um, I have another show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love the It's a Sin on HBO, this uh, British series. It's uh, beautiful and great music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> great suggestions. Thank you very much. Um, what about you, Sierra Lauren? What do you would recommend to watch? Um, as far as films, um, I recently watched uh, The United States versus Billie Holiday. Um, I grew up with a lot of jazz, so um, and I love Billie Holiday, so I was super excited to watch that. Um, just learn about her life a little bit. And as far as like TV shows, um, I really loved Normal People, and um, that's on Hulu, I think. And then Lovecraft Country, which is on HBO. Yeah. <laughs> Very good selection. And uh, Rodea? Yeah, um, I have a few. I think I recently watched a film called Perfect Blue. It's like an animation from the 90s. Um, that was it's amazing. Um, a Korean film called Burning. Uh, it's like a kind of slow burn, like thriller mystery. Uh, but it was like superbly crafted. Uh, another one was like a more recent, it's called like a horror thriller called Run. Um, and but like what I really liked about it is how it kind of they tackled all the, the yeah disability and how they incorporated like authentic like representation within the film. But it was like yeah, it was such a it had me on the edge of my seat the entire time. I was like, oh my gosh. So yeah, what you want in a thriller film, I guess. But yeah, um, yeah, I like I yeah, watched watched a lot recently, but those kind of really stood out to me. Wow, that's great. Um, I was actually expecting something uh, along the lines of uh, Interstellar and Space Odyssey from you. <laughs> but anyway, it was great also. So um, anyway, uh, it was a huge pleasure to talk to you all, guys. Um, we're coming to the end of our time for this discussion. I wanted to thank you all for uh, sharing your films with us and joining us today for this conversation. I hope everyone watching enjoyed the films and be sure to check out the other programs in the festival. Thank you very much again. Bye. <laughs>